Hello and welcome to With Care. Today I'm going to be going over my complete family first aid kit. Now this is a topic that comes up a lot in my infant and family CPR and safety workshops, so I thought it was about time that I did a little video and provided you with a downloadable link so that you can get your own list to create your own family first aid kit. So please don't forget after you've watched the video to scroll down below and you'll find a link to not only my list but also to the key components of the items in today's uh, video. So um, this kit really is for families. If you are going to a particular you know, location with an environment that needs something special, you can always add something to this kit. If someone in your family requires a special medication or something special for their safety, then feel free to adapt it as necessary. But this is gonna be our basic kit for most of our families to use you know, in our homes, our cars, our cottages, on the water, and going camping, things like that. So the first thing is, what am I going to put all of this in? Now you can choose a hard tackle box or tool um, box type kit. You can even get ones with the first aid sign on them. Um, but the problem with those, if you're not using them at home or at your cottage, is that they are quite large and heavy. So if you are packing them to travel for a trip or for camping, you might want to consider it a soft shell case instead. Now this particular soft shell case I really love. I have included the details about it below, but the reason why I like it is that it's got so many amazing compartments within it, so I can house all of these different products, and a lot of them are nice and clear, which means I can see through and easily find what I'm looking for. The other thing I really like about it is that it has the ability to become a hip sack. That means I can attach it around my waist or attach it to a backpack or something else that I've got so I don't have to carry it with me. That means I can keep it close and safe and ready for use when my hands are free carrying children or portaging or um, canoeing or whatever I'm doing. Um, so again, that's a really nice option. Now let's talk about what's going to go inside. The first thing I like to have is a small pocket guide for CPR and safety. Now, I couldn't find anything small enough that really suited my needs. Everything tended to be a larger textbook, like a novel size, um, and I didn't want to carry that in the weight in my first aid kit when we're headed out uh, camping. So I created this out of the workshop handouts that I give to my clients. Now, if there's enough people interested in this, I might actually do this as either a free um, download or even create a little run of properly published little books. So please let me know if this is something that would be of interest. It goes through our infant, child, and adult CPR, as well as choking, as well as most of our safety um, and first aid topics for families. So I wanna have in my kit a CPR mask. I also, um, if I don't want to carry a large one, I could consider instead of it just a disposable face shield, but either way, I'd like to have something in case I need to give CPR to someone who's bleeding or to a stranger. I also want to have some gloves, and I like putting them into individual baggies. That way I know that I'm not kind of making some dirty when I reach in to get one pair. I can make sure they're all kept um, nice and safe and clean for the next use. And then I also know how many I've got left in my kit, and I know how many to replenish. So that's a nice way to do it. I want to have some gauze, so different size gauze for cleaning off our wounds or for applying pressure for clotting. I want to include some medical tape to use with that. I want something to clean off my abrasions or my um, wounds. Now, all of the brands I show you today are just ones that I found easily, readily accessible in our grocery stores and local pharmacies. Please note that you can change at any of these. You do not have to buy these particular name brands, but I think it's important that I show things that are easy to get instead of things that I might um, only be able to find or that might be difficult. So some kind of antiseptic spray to clean off is important. I like to take some antibacterial um, cleaner, so some hand sanitizer. Now, I don't use this a lot at home, but it is something that when we don't have access to fresh running water and soap, it's a good idea to have. I also want to make sure I've got some antibacterial cream to apply to wounds and things, as well as maybe some hand salve or diaper cream or something just to help with irritation or chafing. Having bandages of many different sizes is really important. Not only just sizes, but also maybe having some waterproof ones, having some for blisters, so different types is really important. I also want to think about taking a tensor bandage in case anyone gets a sprain or strain to an ankle or a foot, as well as an instant hot and cold pack. These are really important to have, but just to note, these are a one-time use, so you will need to replace them every time that you use them. I like taking some Arnica gel. This is great for helping with inflammation or pain or you know aches or bruising. I also have an emergency blanket 
essentially this looks like a tinfoil blanket if you've never seen one and it helps because it reflects the um, body heat back into the body so it can keep someone really warm and protects them from wind. I also want to take some tools with me like a small flashlight. I might not be doing first aid in daytime and so I need to make sure that I can see what I'm doing. I also want to have some scissors. Now these are a large pair of paramedic shears. They're really great for removing clothing from the area that you need to address, but you can also get a smaller set of scissors. Just making sure you've got some again to help with um, opening up any clothing, but also to open anything that you've got on your campsite that you need help with. I like to carry regular tweezers for things like splinters, as well as a pair of tick removal tweezers. Very important at this time of year so we can get those ticks out as soon as possible, put them into a baggie, and make sure that we follow up with our healthcare provider. I also have some salt for leeches. If you're not heading out on the water, you might not need this, but if you are going camping, I really recommend taking it. I also always put some uh, matches as well as a lighter into a baggie and keep those nice and dry in the case of an emergency. Now, as far as our medications, an extra thing to remember is that these will all expire. So any of our kind of medications, we need to make sure that we're checking regularly. They will expire faster and, and not be as usable as things like old band-aids. Um, so just making sure that we're switching up the contents of this and checking it every year or so. I like to take something for pain and inflammation, so some acetaminophen, some ibuprofen, thinking about taking the different medications for the different age people in your particular home. I also want to take something for tummy troubles, um, as well as something for our allergic reactions. So mild allergic reactions, this can be very effective with. If it's a more severe allergic reaction and we don't have um, the availability of something like an EpiPen, then these might at least be able to buy us some time or reduce the severity of the actual um, incident. But if we do have someone with a life-threatening known injury, we do want to carry a minimum of two EpiPens with us um, so that we can make sure that we can help them in the time of an anaphylactic or life-threatening allergy. I also want to take something from ears, so particularly swimmer's ear if you are in the summer, um, having some ear drops or ear oil, as well as some eye drops to help with um, things like debris or scratches, or if someone wakes up with a really irritated red eye, that can be really important to help them out. Um, we also want to have something for our burns. So our you know, minor first degree sunburn, something like our aloe gel can be effective. We can also use pure vitamin E. Um, but for our second degree mild kind of minor uh, second degree burns, so blistered burns, something like our medicinal grade Medi honey is a really nice option. This is not like the honey that we get at the grocery store. Um, this is a really antibacterial quality, really amazing, um, and it will help heal wounds and burns. So that's a really effective treatment and something that can be great to have in your first aid kit. I've also got some calamine lotion, some itch cream. You can also take Afterbite, things to help soothe those itchy, irritating bug bites, especially in our little ones before they go off to bed at night. So you can check out which options you want for that. And finally, I like to carry something in my kit that can help someone who's got low blood sugar or to keep a little one happy as you apply first aid. Because often when you're trying to help them, they are not really wanting to be helped. And so giving them some kind of snack or something to keep them occupied can really help. Now, if your little one is too young to eat something like a fruit leather, for instance, you can add a different snack, but make sure it's something that's packaged, lightweight, and can easily be kept in the kit for a few months without going bad. That's really important. So I hope this video today has helped you. Don't forget to scroll down below to get your downloadable list so that you can create your own family first aid kit. And don't forget also to subscribe below so that you can stay tuned of all of my new videos that will be coming out. So again, hope this helped and take care.